Welcome back to Firex Techs. My name is Henry, and in this video, I hope to clear up some confusion about RetroArch's configurations and overrides. RetroArch can feel like a labyrinth with its settings files, which include global settings, input settings, core options, and shader presets, and all of them located in different locations. I will go through each of these settings, how to get to them, and when to use them, but first, you will need to understand the concept of overrides. RetroArch settings follows a hierarchy, and I have made a graphic to help explain this. Let's look at the global settings as an example. At the top is the global configuration named RetroArch.cfg. It contains the general settings of RetroArch. If you were to make a change in the main menu settings page and save the configuration, it would affect all games for all systems. On the next level comes the first override configuration, Core Overrides. If you're not familiar with the RetroArch term Core, it basically just means emulator. I'm going to be using the Gambate Core as an example, which is a popular Game Boy and Game Boy Color emulator. All overrides inherit the settings from the configurations higher up in the hierarchy structure. So in this example, the settings from RetroArch.cfg are passed down to the gambate.cfg file. However, any changes made and saved in the gambate cfg will override those settings from the retroarc.cfg. As the name suggests, it will only apply to the games that use this core. Next up is the directory overrides, or content directory overrides. Just like the core overrides, they inherit all the settings from the global settings, but also any of the core override settings if the game is using that core. Changes made and saved to a directory override apply to any game that is located in a specific folder or directory. In this example, I have Game Boy and Game Boy Color games in different folders in my ROMs folder. If we wanted to make a change just to Game Boy games, because Gambate is a core that runs both Game Boy and Game Boy Color, any changes there affect both systems. We would use the directory overrides instead of the core override. Last but not least, we have the game overrides. Just like before, all the settings get inherited from the configs above it, but changes saved here are unique to a single game and will have the highest priority over any other configuration. Now I will show you how to get to those settings files I mentioned before, and I will do this by making some changes to settings and showing which overrides I would choose and why. I'll be using the Mio Mini Plus for these examples. However, this works the same for all RetroArch versions, including PC and Android. If your UI looks different on your device, the main thing to look out for is that the settings option might be located on the left or right of the screen instead of the list like you'll see on the Mio Mini Plus. First up is the global settings config file. Open the RetroArch app by itself, not running any game or core. It will take us to the main menu, and from here, we will go to the settings and make a change. Let's go to audio and enable the mute when fast forwarding option. Now to save this, we would go back to the main menu and then down to configuration file, and then select save current configuration. If you wanted to make a new configuration file, that is also an option here. That has now been made, so all games and all systems will mute when I toggle fast forward, unless I have saved that setting to be off in one of the override settings. Now let's say I want that mute setting disabled when playing SNES games. First launch an SNES game. Then open up the RetroArch settings. You will notice when launching the RetroArch settings while running a game, it starts you off in the quick menu and you will see the overrides option at the bottom. We will come back here when we have made our changes. So let's back out to the main menu and go to settings, and then go to audio. You will see the setting is enabled because of the change that we made to the global config. Let's turn it off, go back to the main menu, then select quick menu, and then go to overrides. At the top, where it says Active Override File, this shows you what override is currently running. Mine says superfaust.cfg, as that is the core that I am currently running. Here, we have the options to choose what kind of override we want. So if I pick Save Core Overrides All SNES Games, 
that use this core will now have that mute audio when fast forwarding disabled. Or if I want just this game to be affected, we can select save game overrides. You can also remove an override here if you need to delete one. That is how you make changes to the global settings and overrides. Let's move on to the keybind settings. Let's say you want to make an override to swap the C and A button on a Genesis core, but for only one game. First, you would want to load that game up, and then we would open up the RetroArch menu. Here, it takes us to the Quick menu, and we would want to select Controls, and then Port 1 Controls. Here, you can make your changes. Then back out of the control screen. Instead of going back to the override screen, we would want to select the manage remap files option here. Because I want this just to affect one game, I will select save game remap file. Notice the active game file changes to the game name. This is how you would make changes to keybind settings without messing up your controller configuration for any other game or system. The next one is a quick one. It's for core options. You can access them by going to the core options from the quick menu. These are useful for when you have a game that might only run well with certain core options changed. To save them after making changes, you will go to manage core options. Core options only have the choice to save as content directory or game. These options are normally very specific to some games. Last are the shader presets. I will switch over to my PC as the Mio Mini Plus does not have a GPU, therefore does not have the shaders menu. If you are wanting something similar to a shader for the Mio Mini Plus, you can use something called an overlay or a filter. I will make another video on that soon, so please look out for it. I will launch a 3DS game here and open the RetroArch menu. From the quick menu, go down to shaders, here you will first make sure that video shader setting is enabled, and then go to load. From this menu, you will need to select the shader that you want to load. I'm not going to go into them as it's out of the scope of this video, and I want to try to keep this focused. Once you have loaded your shader, you will then select the save option. Here you will see the same override options we know. So if this is for a system, you would either want to choose core or content directory, or if this is for a specific game, select that. Then you are done. The shader I currently have running here is from Mega Bezel, and the artwork here for the 3DS is from Doimon. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, and if you're enjoying my content, please think about subscribing. Thank you for watching.